Scott for Scots here. You ever want to grow new grass faster? Kind of like when you press the two times playback button on your podcast so you can speed through episodes. Except it's Scott's turf builder, rapid grass. You're speeding your way from a thin and damaged lawn to a thicker, stronger one in just weeks. Bit too fast, maybe slow it down, okay. Let's just go back to normal speed. Get a bag of Scott's turf builder, rapid grass today. It grows grass two times faster than seed alone when applied at the new lawn rate, subject to proper care. Feed your lawn. Feed it. As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba da ba ba ba. Welcome to the family here on Purple Mafia. I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Purple Mafia is available on all of your favorite podcasting apps and, of course, on the Pigskin Podcast Network. Thank you once and always for downloading and listening to this show. It is a great pleasure to be back on board with you once again today. Of course, now we've uh, gotten through the divisional round. We have our conference finalists all set up and ready to go. And the Minnesota Vikings also have fired Ed Donatel. What the, hell, what the hell can you do? Sounds like a plan. I guess it sounds like a, a successful week, I suppose. Teams getting to the conference championship and the Vikings moving on from Ed Donatel. Well, I mean, and it's again, it's it's nothing personal. I mean, obviously, he's a, he's a respected NFL coach, secondary coach and such. It sounds like he'll be able to get a job somewhere uh, pretty easily going into the next season, but mostly as a position coach, I'm sure, like secondary coach, something along those lines, a consultant, whatever the heck it is. But it is what it is. Um, this first segment, we're pretty much going to talk about that. Uh, moving on from Ed Donatel and maybe some possibilities at who we could be looking at. Uh, maybe Fangio. Sounds like the Minnesota Vikings again. Yes, there are reports that the Minnesota Vikings have gotten permission to talk to a former Miami Dolphins coach, Flores. This particular report uh, from uh, SB Nation, Daily Norseman. Yeah, Minnesota Vikings Daily Norseman, of course. Uh, Matt Anderson, underscore eight. So thank you, Matt. <laughs> Report, Vikings request to speak with Steelers linebacker coach Brian Flores for defensive coordinator. Of course, he was the Miami Dolphins head coach just last season. So things obviously went south a bit with all of that. And uh, obviously back and forth controversy. But of course, again, a very, very good uh, defensive coordinator. Uh, Vikings are asked permission to uh, have requested permission to interview Saints uh, co-defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen of the, uh, again, the New Orleans Saints. Of course, uh, Allen is their head coach now. He was the defensive coordinator of the Saints during a lot of their good years, most recently under Sean Payton and such. Um, the Vikings have also requested permission to speak with Seahawks assistant Sean Desai. So, again, yep, and Vic Fangio, uh, name hasn't been brought up yet, but strong possibility. Of course, again, he was a guy that obviously, you know, very much uh, related was Ed Donatale and such. Fangio, a very, very, very respected uh, piece. Ian Rappaport, rap, rap, oh, <laughs> Rappaport <laughs> says the Vikings have requested permission to have to speak with defensive assistant Brian Flores, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Coach O'Connell and Flores overlapped in New England for a year. Yep. Um, Nick Olson, that's a familiar name in my world, but Flores is about, uh, is about as different from Donatello as you could get. The 22 Vikings blitzed, blitzed 22, yep. Yeah, 2022 Vikings blitzed 18.5, percent of dropbacks, ninth least. Flores is uh, 20, 21, 20, uh, 20 and 21 Dolphins blitzed 40 percent, second most. The 22 Vikings based out of coverage. M O F O. That sounds like Mofo C six eight four. Okay, the Finns were pressed heavy and ran the most C O and third most C one. So yeah. Um, basically, again, um, Donatello definitely very uh, vanilla defensively, did not have like a kind of a go-getter approach defensively, just kind of preventing the chunk plays, preventing the chunk plays, but they did get chunk plays against them in any way and gave up 400 yards like 11 times this season, so a massive joke, massive joke defensively. And Donatello is a position coach, probably shouldn't be a coordinator. 
Um, he had gotten beat on uh, fourth and long. There's the infamous play. You can look it up on YouTube. It's like fourth and 38. It's the most ridiculous thing ever. And I believe with by the next week, he'd been let go from the Green Bay Packers. Um, it was insane. Um, conversation continue here. Um, teams around the league have actually been pursuing Flores for their open positions. So there is no guarantee that the Vikings will be able to get him to join if he were offered the job and accepted it. Flores would bring him, uh, with him a ton of NFL experience. Around the NFL, most regard, most regard Flores as one of the top defensive minds. Well, this is the only, well, this is only the first name we've heard in the search for a new defensive coordinator. It proves that O'Connell is serious about getting it right with his next hire. And yeah, I mean, he would be way up at the top of my choice. I would have to say Flores, Fangio. Those are like obviously their names, very familiar names, very respected names out there. Um, Sometimes you never know, like Mike Tomlin, nobody had really heard of him coming in. Uh, he uh, People, like, he was respected in terms of, yes, he was a secondary coach coming in and then uh, with the uh, the Colts and then came into Minnesota and ended up being one heck of a uh, defensive coordinator and uh, a, a great hire by Brad Childress. Um, a lot of people thought, I mean, and it's like Brad Childress had that pretty yucky first season. Again, a, a nice start to his career as head coach of the Vikings for the first six games or so, and then things went way south. But Tomlin was outstanding. Next thing you know, he's coaching the Steelers uh, because Bill Cowher moves on, and he's still the coach all these years later. Uh, and he was the Super Bowl his second year as head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steeler Nation, as you'd call it. He was the second black coach in NFL history to win the Super Bowl um, just two years after uh, Tony Dungy. So a very impressive head coach. He's still the coach all these years later. Obviously, he's damn good. So it's it's not always the name recognition and such, but um, Ted Cottrell was a respected name coming in from the Buffalo Bills, and he was a he was a wonderful defensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings. I thought um, he was great. Ted Cottrell coming in from the Buffalo Bills, and Vikings were able to land Antoine Winfield and all that, and the Vikings defense got better for quite a while there. Um, Ted Cottrell was a nice one. The Tomlin took over, and then Frazier ended up being our coordinator for quite a while. Then got the head coaching job and so on and so forth. Obviously, uh, yeah, he was a secondary coach with the uh, um, Indianapolis Colts. So, again, Mike Tomlin obviously was a, you know, he was like a miracle defensive coordinator hire and was gone before you know it because he was a well-thought-of coordinator. Um, Flores would be a nice, nice acquisition, obviously, and again, um, a more aggressive approach, kind of like kind of take it to the other team approach rather than uh, let them take it to us and then see what happens, that kind of thing. Ah, you know, and the way uh, Donatel was pretty much refusing to make any adjustments, it's like, hey, this, this, it works. Believe me, it works. Believe me, it works. Believe me. Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't work. That's the only problem. I mean, what's the most important part about a defense? Well, being able to stop somebody. And, <laughs> well, this is the reason why the Vikings failed this year. This. <laughs> yeah, 400 yards a game basically given up, which is like... I don't know. It's unacceptable. That's just the best way to describe it. Unacceptable. <laughs> there is no other way to describe it. <laughs> it's just, I mean, what what more can you say when it comes to the Minnesota Vikings defensively this past season? The passing yards given up, uh, unable to stop anybody tackling, um, and of course, again, the personnel guys like you know Eric Kendricks are just they're just done. They're past their prime. They're past their prime. They can't play anymore. Just like, uh, um, you know, I would come back and say that Adam Thielen really just, unfortunately, can't really can't really play anymore. And I'm sorry, it's just kind of how it is. It's just kind of how it is when it comes to offense, defense, and all that. But yeah, defensively, like a guy's past their prime, and what more is there to say? When, when somebody's past their prime and they can't really, you know, get the job done, and I don't know, I mean, it's a combination of things. Older players... And of course, the sco the coach was kind of, the coach is kind of from a different time, you know, that cover two defense and all that. It's just not the same, and it wasn't even necessarily cover two, but it's the whole point of cover two and of shell defense is to prevent the chunk plays. But then when you give up 950 yards a game, you're not really preventing anything, you know. And the only thing you're preventing is wins, I guess, or preventing stops because the stops were not happening at the end of the day. And the uh, Ed Donatel defense. And Frazier's last few years here were pretty much a joke as well. And again, there were some washed up players defensively or banged up players that were just not going to be better again, like Cedric Griffin. He was just done. He couldn't play anymore. 
Sometimes it's just a fact. He could not freaking play anymore, and there's nothing you could do. It's time to move on. When you look at the overall team defense, the Vikings were second worst only to Detroit, giving up 388 Point seven total yards per game. Detroit, 392.4. But Detroit certainly improved as the year progressed. Teams like Houston, Chicago, Las Vegas, Atlanta were all better than the Minnesota Vikings. And overall defense, pass defense, the Minnesota Vikings. Um, what am I going here? I apologize. Yeah, San Francisco, number one in yards given up. Uh, Philadelphia, number two. So uh, that's your conference championship right there. It's going to be insanely interesting to see how that turns up. Points allowed per game. San Francisco is the best. Buffalo number two. So 49ers could definitely be the best team in football. The Vikings were the fifth worst team defensively in points, giving up 25.1. That doesn't necessarily guarantee anything. Rush defense Tennessee was number one. San Francisco number two. 49ers are always way at the top. That defense is great. Vikings rush defense is in the lower third, you could say, uh, giving up 123 a game. Vikings passing yards, giving up a game. Yep, Philadelphia is number one in the league in, in the good way. Tennessee's the worst. Wow. Vikings the second worst. Second worst passing yards, giving up. So our rush defense was slightly better, believe it or not, which is kind of hard to believe at the end of the day. Uh, interceptions, the Vikings were reasonable. I mean, 15 interceptions on the season. That doesn't mean you're great. But, you know, we had some nice interceptions that kind of helped the Minnesota Vikings win some games. So it certainly helped. Uh, in stacks, Minnesota Vikings, believe it or not, not at the bottom or anything, but kind of, you know, not that great either. 38 total stacks on the season. We had some nice pass rushes earlier in the year, and they continued and continued to disappear as the season progressed and in the bottom third of the NFL. So, again, I mean, you're hoping for more, more of a pass rush. You're hoping for younger players, again, like a draft, he he heavily focused on defense, Um it doesn't look like we have the right guard position solved just yet, depending on how you feel about Ed Ingram and his progress. But it, it wasn't a good rookie campaign for Ed Ingram. So things like that, when you look at personnel and coaches and such. But uh, special teams, I think the Vikings are okay there. Hopefully we can continue to have, uh, hopefully that special teams continue to play well and eliminate mistakes and such. This and that, eliminate mistakes and getting beat and all that. But uh, generally speaking, it was a decent year for them. Um, offensive, offensively, the Minnesota Vikings are very promising, but obviously some weird decisions. And of course, check down Charlie Cousins uh, let us down and when it mattered most. Uh, other, other than that, you got the Eagles and the 49ers in the NFC Championship game, the Bengals and the Kansas, Kansas City Chiefs of the rematch. The only team that didn't return was the Los Angeles Rams. So three out of the final four last year have returned. The world champions are the ones that are missing, just like the Twins were the ones missing in 92. Uh, after the, the all the other final four teams in the 91 Major League uh, Baseball playoffs um, returned. It was Toronto returned. They lost to the Twins, of course, in the ALCS. Um, Atlanta and Pittsburgh returned. Atlanta went back to the championship round and lost again to the Toronto, <laughs> Toronto Blue Jays. So hopefully that doesn't mean it's Philadelphia. Or no, the Toronto Blue Jays won, so that would be the 49ers. So if the formula continues, the San Francisco 49ers <laughs> formula continues, but if it's just like the 92 baseball playoffs, <laughs> the San Francisco 49ers are your world champions. So I guess that adds up perfectly. They're the team that lost the NFC title game to the future champions last year. So yeah, that would mean the, uh, that would mean the 49ers win it all against the Cincinnati Bengals. That actually is kind of sounds perfect, which could be exactly what will happen. But maybe the Bengals will win it. As long as Philly and Kansas City don't, I'll be okay <sighs> at the end of the day. Um, oh, that would suck. Philadelphia and Kansas City actually have the two most sacks in the entire NFL. Philadelphia with 70, which is 15 ahead of number two Kansas City. 15 more sacks. So you better protect uh, Brock Purdy. That's going to be very, very interesting going forward. We'll talk about the playoffs some more, but... That's definitely a stat that's uh, pretty scary. Philadelphia is a tough son of a biscuit, and 49ers have their work cut out for them if they want to win this championship this season. We'll be back to talk about it right after this. back here on Purple Mafia. Time to look around uh, the postseason conversations. Obviously, review the uh, divisional round, 
preview championship Sunday and all that good stuff. Some interesting, <laughs> interesting football this past weekend. Three games that weren't all that great in terms of quality. One that was pretty, pretty quality for the most part, except for the low scoring uh, aspect of it, Dallas and San Francisco. But uh, a pretty good idea of how things are going to go moving forward, at least I would hope. Uh, but first, we're going to hear from DraftKings. Or at least attempt to. Yep, so <laughs> right now, this one, uh, we're still at the divisional round with the uh, the scripts. So just to let you know, I'm going to kind of like improvise a little bit. So we'll go from there. The NFL playoff action continues. We are one step closer to the Super Bowl 57. And for the NFL Championship Sunday, <laughs> yep, and for NFL Championship Sunday, check out DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Plus, all new and existing customers can take a shot at an even bigger payout with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. Boost your NFL winnings with each leg. You add up to 100%. So, like, say, uh, Joe Burrow throwing three touchdowns against Kansas City. Let, let's make it four, right? Um, no, and about the, the upcoming games, yeah, I mean, I'm going with Cincinnati over Kansas City. I, I, I really feel that, and, of course, that's a, <laughs> that's letting the cat out of the bag with the previews, but I think you figured that already. Um, Cincinnati is my quote-unquote game of the week. Cincinnati, Jacksonville, of course, both of these games should be pretty, did I say Jacksonville? Cincinnati versus Kansas City. I wish it was Jacksonville. Um, but that's going to be an exciting game, and that's where I would go. Uh, my, my betting money with the uh, Cincinnati Bengals going against the Kansas City Chiefs, pretty much regardless what the uh, the line is, because obviously it's going to change during the course of the week, the betting line and all that. So Cincinnati, that's what I'm really exciting about. Uh, excited about going forward. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code TPPN. Again, uh, the uh, the Pigskin Podcast Network. New customers can bet just five dollars on the NFL uh, on, on on the NFL conference conference games <laughs> and get two hundred in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with t- with code TPPN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. So yes, do look forward to that. Yep. Kansas City looks unbelievable, don't they? Uh, no, uh, Cincinnati. My mind is going all over the place, and I apologize. Um, Cincinnati does look unbelievable, and there's no doubt about that. But uh, we're going to start with the not-so-exciting Saturday games. That's just how we have to do it, and then we kind of keep moving with the slightly more exciting uh, Sunday games. <laughs> Open things up with, what was the first game? It was Kansas City-Jacksonville, wasn't it? Yeah, Kansas City Jacksonville, twenty-seven to ten, uh, twenty-seven to twenty. Kansas City ends up winning it, but apparently uh, Patrick Mahomes had a high ankle sprain in the game and missed in a bit about a time during the game. Chad Henney, who beat us a couple of years back, which was super annoying when Mahomes didn't even play in that game. Um, Chad Henney uh, completed five of seven with a touchdown. Mahomes pretty efficient when he was out there, but looked a little bit less of a player when he came back from the high ankle sprain. So we'll see. Will it be a factor? I mean, uh, would Cincinnati beat them anyway? We'll see. But uh, uh, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, I, I may not be a big fan of the Chiefs, but he's not the kind of guy who makes excuses, like when he had a, a bad toe. And, uh, well, <laughs> he had very little offensive line protection for him in the Super Bowl where the Buccaneers beat them. Was that Super Bowl 55? If this is 57, that would be 55. The double nickel where uh, <laughs> Tom Brady won his seventh Super Bowl. And uh, that was pretty pretty exciting game. If you're not a Chiefs fan, which I'm not, so I actually enjoyed that very much. But um, back to where we need to be, the Kansas City Chiefs. Trevor Lawrence, you know, just kind of in a, a mediocre game. Kansas City, or Jacksonville, I don't know why I keep saying the wrong team every single time I open my mouth. Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville was behind most of the way, which was frustrating. They did uh, kind of hang in there at times. They were they had it tied 7-7, seven to seven. but for the most part, Jacksonville was you know, playing catch-up, and it's unfortunate. Uh, they, they were in the game most of the time, but once it got to be a 10-point lead for the Kansas City Chiefs, that, that just kind of felt like that's going to be it, unfortunately, with seven minutes remaining. Jacksonville did muster one last kick, but it was kind of late. They still had a chance, maybe some kind of uh, miracle play or something, but, you know, 30 seconds remaining, odds are strongly against you because the, the ball's going back to the Chiefs. As long as they're able to hang on to the football, it's over. And even if Jacksonville did do some kind of miracle uh, fum, uh, fumble recovery, because obviously it's it's harder and harder to, to make miracles like that happen nowadays, unfortunately with the way the rules have changed. 
Um, it's actually kind of a bummer, but I suppose you don't get some of those crazy cheap losses in the postseason. Would would have helped the Vikings, uh, but maybe maybe not in some cases. Um, the, the old rules did help the Vikings against the uh, New, uh, New York Giants back in 1997. But um, Riley Patterson, former Minnesota Viking uh, uh, draft pick or training camp inventory, not draft pick, free agent kicker that we brought in to, to compete, wanted making a 48-yard kick with 30 seconds remaining. But unfortunately, it was just kind of too little too late. Is Kansas City capable of getting the job done? Sure they are, but I certainly the heck don't want them to. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster with 29 yards and two catches. Uh, Travis Kelsey with the usual kind of crazy game, 98 yards, two touchdowns. He was targeted 17 times. He's the nookie blankie for Patrick Mahomes, and there's no doubt about that. That's why he's in every commercial with Patrick Mahomes practically. Well, at least some of them. Um, Pacio, uh, Pach, Pachico, pardon me. Uh, he did have 95 yards. He's an obnoxious son of a gun. Um, Average eight yards a carry, so it kind of is what it is. He had the 39-yard burst. Jacksonville just couldn't do much about all of that. They couldn't make their tackles, and of course, uh, Patrick Mahomes was efficient as he could be, and Chad Henney was insanely efficient. Uh, that's the conversation in a lot of cases where, you know, if your star quarterback goes out and you have, uh, you know, Sean Manning as your backup, you're kind of dead. Like the, the Chiefs would probably lose the game if Sean Manning was the quarterback. I got to think. I mean, like, <laughs> or John David Booty or whatever the heck. Like, name whatever random Viking quarterback who really wasn't much of a quarterback at all. Um, Jacksonville probably would have won the football game, even though they just, they just couldn't do much. Kansas City's defense is definitely a problem, and they're going to be a problem for anybody. They'll be playing in the future, but they'll be a problem for Cincinnati. They have the second best pass rush in the NFL in terms of total sacks and all that. So 55 sacks on the season, and Philadelphia's got 70. 70, yeah. Yeah, 70. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's a little scary. So that's the end of that. The Kansas City Chiefs advanced to the AFC Championship game for the 19th time in 19 years. That's what it feels like. Pretty much has been that way. Not real excited about it, but uh, we'll see. At least old peace sign is gone. So... It's they they lose that that definitely uh, that definite threat where he could obviously burn people again. Old Pete sign himself <laughs> is now in the Miami Dolphins. We'll move forward. Move forward to an even more exciting game. Really, really exciting. You go off to the East Coast, NFC East teams. You think okay, NFC East division rivals, the Giants, the Philadelphia Eagles. May, you know maybe it could have been Philadelphia and Dallas. That would have been you know exciting, I suppose, for the Cowboys and Eagles fans, especially the Cowboys for now. To have a chance at uh, their division rival in the conference final. Not meant to be, and I'm totally fine with that. Uh, New York Giants, again, it's an it's an interesting division and all that. The Giants were very competitive all season, and we saw what they did to us, or what we allowed them to do to us is more like it. 9-7-1, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's like they weren't that good, were they? And Philadelphia put them exactly where they probably should be. 38-7, to a very familiar score to Minnesota Viking fans in the NFC Championship game few years back. Philadelphia looks very similar to that team in a lot of ways. Um, an incredible pass rush. Again, like I said, 70 sacks on the season. It's not just Jalen Hurts. Obviously, he's a huge threat. Obviously, very talented going forward. Daniel Jones apparently had kind of, you know, he had kind of a distance response. Like, I really enjoyed my time here, this and that. You know, kind of like the sounds of a guy who's moving on. So, and of course, the uh, Giants did not pick up the option on Daniel Jones. DJ, he is a free agent. He had a decent season. Um, he could be a decent quarterback for somebody, but he sure as heck isn't a future star. Like I was talking about last week, like 3,200 yards, career high. 15 touchdowns, career high. So it's nothing to get real excited about, but there are teams out there that maybe are an okay quarterback away from competing at a high level. And obviously he's got mobility, which is something I think Minnesota Vikings wouldn't mind. Not saying the Vikings are going to be signing Daniel Jones because that's the last thing we're going to do. The next Mike and quarterback is going to be on the rookie scale. He's not going to be a free agent, unless we're crazy. Um, so, I mean, I, I suppose anything's possible if you move on from Cousins, but right now there's too much of a cap hit anyway to do something like that, is uh, invest a ton more money in cap hit in another free agent quarterback. That's not where the Vikings are going. Richie James with seven catches, 51 yards for the Giants. Saquon Barkley, 61 yards on only nine carries because they're playing from behind. <clears throat> Daniel Jones... Six rushes, 24 yards on the ground. Uh, Breda got in the end zone for a touchdown. He was a pain in the butt to deal with with the 
for the Vikings uh, last week. And pretty much everybody was when it came to the Giants. Jalen Hurts only had to attempt 24 passes, as the Eagles can run on pretty much anybody. Kenneth Gainwell, 12 rushes, 35 yards. Just crazy. 112 yard, uh, uh, 35 yard long, pardon me. 112 yards overall. Almost 10 yards a carry. It was Tecmo football. Miles Sanders, 90 yards on 17 rushes. Carries of about five, five and a half. So, kind of similar to what they did to us in a lot of ways. Just kind of ran all over the Minnesota Vikings. What the Giants did to us. The Eagles definitely are a massive threat to not only go to the Super Bowl, but win it, unfortunately. But hopefully the 49ers have something to say and do about that. I am not a fan of the Eagles. I mean, if the Vikings if the Vikings had this, this talent, this exact roster, I'd be pretty excited. But, well, we'll see. Will San Francisco be able to match them and get the job done? It's going to be a very intriguing game. Um, both of them should be. It's just a horrible thought of the possibility of Kansas City and uh, Philadelphia in the Super Bowl. It could happen, but we'll see if... Uh, Patrick Mahomes and his, oh, that had to suck. There's the high ankle sprain happening right there. 49 of Jacksonville going right into it, kind of the knee into uh, Mahomes' ankle. Mahomes very upset at the time. Um, yeah, but we'll see. Chad Henney's a heck of a backup, isn't he? So we'll have to wait and see. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. Philadelphia made mincemeat of the New York midgets. The New York midgets, the Eagles soared over the midgets. That's pretty much what happened. They were Giants versus us, Midgets versus the Eagles, unfortunately. Because um, I would have loved to see the Eagles get eliminated in some kind of crazy upset. I would have loved that. Uh, 49ers, the road to the Super Bowl would be wide open, i got to think. But maybe not. Daniel Jones, not good. 58, uh, 53.8 quarterback rating. Just overall not a good day. And he is a free agent headed to the God knows who. <laughs> God knows who. It could be anybody. I can't even... Imagine maybe the uh, Washington uh, Commanders. That wouldn't be the worst idea. I wouldn't actually not be surprised if that was one of them. So just kind of some off-season speculation thrown in here. Maybe the Commanders. Uh, a division rival who, they just, uh, I don't know. Uh, Taylor Heineke, I don't know. Uh, Carson Wentz, just just no. He's, he's not going to make it. Carson Wentz is probably a career backup now, unfortunately, at best. He might not even be that, the way things are going. But, um... Yeah, or he's going to be the greatest backup quarterback, Daniel Jones. But I think he's a starter, just not a great one. Kind of a placeholder of a starter. And the Giants um, go into the uh, free agency trying to figure things out. Maybe they will sign Daniel Jones, but his his words at the end of the season didn't sound all that great. So, I don't know, maybe he's just ready to go. Yeah, I mean, God, the Giants' defense looked a lot like ours against the Eagles. That's pretty much what it looked like. Looks like Cam Smith is the Vikings uh, in the mock draft scrolling on the screen right now on NFL Network. 23rd pick, the Vikings are going to take cornerback corner back Cam Smith, according to them. So early mock draft, we'll get deeper into that as we get further and further into the offseason and into the postseason, but not this week. Eagles advance to the NFC title game. Lottie freaking da. Ugh. <laughs> That's pretty much my thoughts on that. Cincinnati, Buffalo. It was a snowy day in Buffalo and another empty day in Buffalo. 27 to 10. Cincinnati was, again, it was kind of like, it was kind of like the, uh, kind of like Kansas City in a way versus the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. Buffalo was playing from behind most of the way. In fact, they were down 14 nothing in the first quarter. It just, you know, you just had that feeling. You just had that feeling like things are not going right for the Buffalo Bills. There's always a chance they'll come back, but they just never did. Um, they got within seven a couple times, fourteen to seven, uh, seventeen to ten. They kind of hung in there, hung in there, and then Cincinnati just started pulling away. Buffalo couldn't couldn't get it done. Uh, passes were being dropped, uh, just incomplete passes, and the Cincinnati defense was pretty damn good to say the least. Joe Mixon kept moving the chains, hundred and five yards, five point three yards a carry. Uh, Perini also thirty three yards on. A, 4.7, and Joe, uh, Joe Burrow, nice and mobile game as well. 31 yards, about 5 yards there. Jamar Chase made a few big plays, got in the end zone once. Uh, Hayden Hurst also with a touchdown in the game, 59 total yards. But Cincinnati was just the better team. They were just simply the better team. Uh, Josh Allen was flustered. Josh Allen was mediocre at best. 42 attempts, again, playing from behind. I mean, okay, it, it is what it is. They're playing from behind. They couldn't even use Singletary a whole lot. Only six rushes. Josh Allen had eight. 
He did get in the end zone once, and that's nice for him, but overall, just another frustrating, empty feeling for the Buffalo Bills, and we relate to that oh so well. Minnesota Vikings in the NFC, Buffalo Bills in the AFC. It is it is what it is. Cincinnati, for the longest time, was Detroit of the AFC. Now, uh, I don't know. Who do you compare them to? Maybe the next New England Patriots, who couldn't do jack crap other than making a couple Super Bowls, but being a sacrificial lamb to a dynasty-type team, um, which the Patriots were a sacrificial lamb to the uh, 85 Bears, and they also were a sacrificial lamb to a, a shorter, di- it wasn't even dynasty, but a dominant team for a few years in the Green Bay Packers in the mid-90s. They were a... <sighs> Sorry, I'm getting distracted by some noise upstairs. Um... <laughs> They were, a, <laughs> they were a sacrificial lamb to Brett Favre in that one magical season for the Packers. We were all very, very happy for that team and that fan base that year, weren't we? Were we just dancing on the clouds? And I didn't like the Patriots back then. I was never a Drew Bledsoe guy until much later, maybe when he got with Buffalo. Just, I don't know, just wasn't a fan. Um, just wasn't. A couple years later, it's like fan for life, basically. <laughs> but obviously just like a casual fan because I'm a Viking fan, not a uh, Viking fan and a Viking podcast host now for 15 years. So oldest podcast host there is when it comes to that, at least I'm pretty sure, in the podcasting world. No real radio included, unfortunately. Stefan Diggs was targeted 10 times, but again, it just was a mess. It was a mess. It was a cold, snowy, slippery day where guys could get hurt quite easily. Um, overhead collision type of play. There were costly penalties on Buffalo. They just weren't, they just, it was just kind of like, (laughs) kind of like a Vikings playoff game where you're playing a fairly even match team, a team that's very good, just like you, a dangerous team, a team that might win a championship, but your team is ever capable of winning the championship with the talent that's there. And everything looked so promising two, three weeks ago. And just, (laughs) One 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 unfortunate circumstance was what it was. I mean, I, that's <laughs> it was what it was. That 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 affected uh, actually both of these teams. Ironically, a very very unfortunate circumstance. And thank you, Lord, that uh, Hamlin was was there, and, and that's awesome. Like there and greeting his teammates and everything. That's really cool. Um, but then also again, it's just kind of like again they're the Vikings of the AFC. Like here we go. It's time, time to make that magical. Uh, Time to have that magical season and put an end to the drought. And then it's just, here we go again. We can't even get to the conference championship game. Can't even get there. It's ridiculous. Or can't get to, sure as heck, can't get to the Super Bowl yet again. Um, they've only been to one AFC championship game, haven't they? When, when you put all this together, they lost to Kansas City last year in the second round, didn't they? They were winning that whole game, and Kansas City roared back and won. Devastating. Uh, this year, it was just, you know, kind of like when... Uh, the Baltimore Ravens beat the crap out of the, the Denver Broncos real bad. Um, what was that, 2012, right? They just beat the living star out of them, and they went on to win the Super Bowl. So if this was that magical game, which happens every year in the second round, it happens every year, where one of these two teams is going to win it all. Might be the Bengals. Might be. It really might be the Cincinnati Bengals. And I'd be very happy if it was. <laughs> Don't want Kansas City. They just won. Philadelphia, are you kidding me? Hell no. Biggest jerks ever, you know, biggest jerk fan base of all time, and they just won a Super Bowl. <laughs> so, and we were one of the, uh, we were one of the, uh, t- we were the roadkill along the way, and I, I hate saying that, but it sure as heck seemed that way, just like the Giants were this past weekend. They were roadkill to the Philadelphia Eagles, just embarrassing. Um, but another sad, empty feeling, and I, I feel for Buffalo fans, I really do. All they have going for them right now is maybe the Buffalo Sabers, the best offense in the NHL, but. I don't know. I mean, they've been to the Cup Finals once, and <laughs> they got beat. Uh, they probably weren't gonna. They probably weren't gonna win anyway. But the way it ended again is probably classic, like Minnesota slash Buffalo sports fans' uh, typical nightmare ending, with a call, uh, a goal that was controversial and probably shouldn't have been allowed by Brett Hall of the Dallas Stars. So, kind of is what it is. Buffalo with the uh, what was it? Wide right. Mm, wide right, uh, north cut, yeah. Um, and then they take in the first in the first round. They 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 draft Steve Christie, and it just wasn't enough. They went to three more Super Bowls, and they weren't even competitive in those games. And the one they actually had a lead at halftime, they got obliterated in the second half by the bleeping Cowboys. I believe that was the fourth and final Super Bowl appearance after the '93 season. 
Like Buffalo, it didn't even feel like they had a chance, you know, in that game. Great team, but just their chance was against the Giants. It truly was, and it just wasn't meant to be. So Cincinnati, let's talk about them a hell of a lot more, and I apologize. Again, I mean, Joe Burrow, he looks like the guy. He really does. He looks like he's the next Brady-esque quarterback in this in this league. Patrick Mahomes is kind of in his own class. Yeah, he's kind of, he's just different. He's a different kind of player. Heck of a player, obviously. Got that nice sidearm uh, release and all that. <laughs> um, uh, so did Brock Purdy. He did a couple of weird sidearms yesterday. Uh, good for him. We'll see what happens. Maybe it'll be a rematch of that Super Bowl. It could possibly be, but Right now, with Cincinnati's defense, along with, again, Joe Burrow, who is hungrier than ever, being oh so close last year to winning a championship, how could I possibly go against the Cincinnati Bengals? Um, it's ironic, though, they only had 30 sacks this season, which is the fourth least in the NFL. So that is something to consider. Uh, they are the sixth best in terms of points allowed. Kansas City, Kansas City was number two in sacks, by the way. Kansas City's kind of middle of the road, but it's not much of a point difference, though. Cincinnati gave up 20.1 points a game. Kansas City, 21.7. I mean, it's not that big of a difference. So, teams like Chicago, 27.2. Minnesota, 25.1. That is a big that is a big difference. Because um, now we're kind of sort of previewing the AFC, kind of jumping ahead. So, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. I'll go back here. Let's talk about San Francisco and Dallas quick first. It was definitely the feature presentation of the weekend. And now, our feature presentation. And there's a brand new segment for all of you. So, <laughs> or not segment, but soundbite for all of you to enjoy uh, going forward. <laughs> so, hopefully you like that one. Um, Dallas, San Francisco. This was the ninth matchup in the postseason, dating back to, you know, back in the good old days, the catch. Apparently, apparently the Dwight Clark catch was... It was actually a throwaway, and even Bill Walsh told Joe Montana in the famous kind of conversation leading up into that final final play, um, if there's nothing there, just simply throw the ball away. Yeah, and, and Joe was like, all right, yep, and he was going to throw the ball away, basically, but only within range of where Dwight Clark could magically catch it, and Dwight Clark got up and made an unbelievable catch, and the San Francisco 49ers dynasty was born on that play. They defeated the Cincinnati Bengals in a fairly close game in that Super Bowl. Pretty interesting. And that was um, 40 years ago, right? <clears throat> that was 40 years ago. No, that's couldn't have been 40. It had to be 41 now. So, yeah, well, I, I guess it was 40 years ago. I'm confused by all of that. I thought that was the 81 team, but <laughs> it is what it is. Let's just keep moving. Brock Purdy wasn't all that great in the game. Cowboys' uh, pass rush was pretty aggressive the entire day. But San Francisco, thankfully, is another super balanced team with a great offense and great defense. Dak Prescott with a couple of interceptions by just great plays defensively. They weren't bad passes necessarily by Dak Prescott. They were unbelievably great uh, defensive plays by the San Francisco defense. This is a team that could absolutely win the Super Bowl. Uh, Cowboys, I, I just don't see it. And it's ironic how a team... As dominating as they were in my earliest days watching, like, full-time watching football rather than part-time in and out in the late 80s, kind of here and there. Just kind of, oh, okay, this is on. Cool. <laughs> when I didn't know anything. Um, but the, yeah, the Cowboys, as dominant as they were, winning the three Super Bowls and always kind of being in the mix and being a huge threat, they haven't been to the NFC Championship game since 1995 when they won, the, when they won it all. It's just the darndest thing, isn't it? They haven't gotten that far since 95, so it's crazy. Prescott again, a couple of INTs. San Francisco led most of the way. Dallas was up 6-3 uh, to three for a little bit, but then San Francisco kind of hang in, hung in there. An extremely low-scoring first half. Second half, San Francisco kind of got a little more aggressive, finally got in the end zone, <laughs> finally got in the end zone in the fourth quarter. A very, very back-and-forth battle in the third quarter. Brett Maher did make a 25-yard kick after missing four the previous week. What an absolute mess. Couldn't make an extra point. It was crazy. And Dallas just kept going for it, going for it, because they're frustrated with all of that, uh, with the missed kicks, of course. Um, yeah, anyhow, uh, McCaffrey finally was able to get in. The 49ers finally got down the field enough. 
um, and, and got a touchdown. Again, after an interception that looked like it was going to be a sure touchdown for the uh, 49ers, and one of them ended up being a field goal. So that's what kind of day it was. As a lot of us forget, including myself, just how damn good that Dallas defense is. And we learned the hard way after the Buffalo game, just like a reality check immediately after that great Buffalo game when the Vikings, you know, shocked the world and beat what was the best team in football. They got destroyed the next week by the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys had a few weeks in a row where they were absolute world beaters. Like, if that was the postseason, they probably would have won the Super Bowl in that three-game stretch. Or at least they would have got there and maybe lost but to the uh, Cincinnati Bengals or Chiefs. Well, uh, <laughs> who knows? We'll, we'll never know now. Um, San Francisco was just a little bit better most of the way, thankfully, and I'm happy to hear that, uh, happy to see that happen. I'm not sure why this is saying 22 to 12, because that never happened. So it's kind of weird how things turned out there. <laughs> um, ended up being 19 to 12 as your final score. The 49ers end up surviving in a very brutal defensive back and forth game. 13 and 4 record. It's just ironic. Oh, they're the same record as the Minnesota Vikings and all that, but a completely different team. An absolutely different team. Um, and it's about as classic football as you can get, seeing those gold pants, gold helmets versus the silver, the like kind of silverish blue helmets with the blue star, the uh, sky blue pants. It's an incredible, incredible matchup. That's, uh, you know, part of football history for forever. So, obviously, again, an amazing, uh, an amazing football game that a lot of us will remember. And unfortunately, Cowboy fans will remember is yet again another, <laughs> another roadblock where they couldn't get to the Super Bowl yet again. Um, I never saw this team making it, but I guess, you know, there was always a chance. 49ers versus the Philadelphia Eagles is going to be an epic battle. So now we'll talk about Championship Sunday right here, right now. <clears throat> Again, it's going to be a... Uh, <laughs> definitely going to be an epic battle between Kansas City and Cincinnati. Cincinnati doesn't have much of a pass rush, but they will be a threat, and maybe they will. Maybe they'll get a uh, big amount of sacks. Obviously, again, an overall dangerous defense. In terms of yardage given up, they are... About 7th. Yeah, they're 7th in the NFL in yards given up. Kansas City's 8th. So they're like right on top of each other. in total yards given up. Um, rush. Cincinnati gives up a lot of rush, unfortunately, which is not good. 335. But that's not Kansas City's number one threat. Kansas City's actually just a tiny bit ahead of them. They, uh... Yeah, they give up... Gosh, about a couple yards, uh less a game, so kind of interesting how that uh, all kind of comes together. They're actually right on top of each other. They give up about seven yards less rushing a game. So kind of funny how that turns out, passing yards. Cincinnati is, again, unfortunately in the lower half. So they do give up yards, but they're a very stingy defense. So they, they still stop teams at the end of the day. Kansas City, slightly better. So obviously their defense is slightly better, Kansas City's. And there'll be a pass rush. But Patrick Mahomes with a high ankle sprain, we'll have to wait and see. Will Cincinnati be able to capitalize on that? Maybe force him into some mistakes? Or, you know, just he's not going to be as mobile, plain and simple. He won't be able to run for those first downs as easily as he would otherwise. Um, and yes, I know how guys, when their competitive juices are flowing, they do things that aren't normal. And then maybe after the game, they're like, holy crap, the pain, the pain, the soreness. And then two weeks later, they're ready to go for the Super Bowl. But uh, we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. I'm sticking with my guns. Cincinnati defeats the Kansas City Chiefs. I just think there's a little more extra there with the. Uh, there's just a little. Uh, there's just a little something extra and something special with the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, with Joe Burrow at quarterback, and obviously again they're well coached. Um, they're well coached. They're well disciplined. No team is perfect, and things can change very quickly in a mere week with with anybody. Like the way Buffalo just kind of. That's it. Just like that. They're done. So stuff like that. And the Giants, how great they looked against us. Absolutely smushed by the uh, Philadelphia Eagles just a week later. So that's kind of how that goes. The <clears throat> Cincinnati Bengals end up winning the game. Though a final score, I think something along the likes of... I'm seeing it being a little bit higher scoring, like 31. I think they score 30. Well, I, I don't know. It might be low scoring. 27-24, Cincinnati Bengals edge the Kansas City Chiefs. McPherson with a, whatever, 50-yard field goal near the end of the game, ends up winning it, and the Cincinnati Bengals advance to their second consecutive Super Bowl. So no Super Bowl loss, like curse, 
for Cincinnati. Um, it was the Super Bowl champion curse this year. As the Rams look like the team that lost <laughs> in a lot of ways, and they probably should have. I thought Cincinnati outplayed that Rams team the whole way until the very end. <sighs> Sorry. The uh, 49ers versus the Philadelphia Eagles, that's going to be obviously a great game. It's going to be in Philadelphia, which is tough. Will both of the road teams pull this out, and I'll get the dream matchup Cincinnati, uh, San Francisco that I wanted last year. Philadelphia is the new team of this group. Last year, again, yep, they're replacing the Rams, so we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Uh, and if things turn out like the 92 baseball season, the champion will be the 49ers, so we'll see. <laughs> Cincinnati would, would be the Braves, like losing again. That would suck. Um, and Kansas City would be the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the Rams would be the Twins the next year if they don't get there. Whatever. Um, Philadelphia, number one in sacks, like I said already. So, obviously, again, when you look at the uh, the pass yards, they're the number one in that, too. Yep. Yep. Number one in that also. San Francisco, believe it or not, is kind of in the mid to lower echelon in terms of pass yards given up. But, again, that's because they were probably playing ahead most of the way. Uh, so that's how that goes. They only give up. Uh, they have the second best rush defense in all of football, 77.7. The best was the Tennessee Titans, who don't matter anymore. <laughs> um, as for Philly, they give up some yards, 121 a game. That's a huge difference. So, again, yeah, don't be surprised to see some successful running here. Yeah, like you'll, you'll see some McCaffrey. You'll see some uh, Elijah Mitchell. And, yeah, it's going to be an exciting game. It really is. I'm actually surprised Philadelphia gives up that many rushing yards, but um, we'll have to wait to see. If San Francisco is going to have the lead in this game, if they can get ahead, their chances of winning are probably very high because of Philadelphia's mediocre run defense. So they're right in the middle. So it's not terrible, but it, it's a, if there's a weakness for Philly, that's one of them. And also the fact Jalen Hurts is a younger guy, but he's become a hell of a player pretty quickly. And again, Philadelphia's run defense, uh, running offense is phenomenal, So, <laughs> including with Jalen Hurts as well. But that great uh, San Francisco run defense could be what gets the job done and helps the 49ers get to the uh, get to the Super Bowl for the second time in four years. Maybe a rematch of the Chiefs. Otherwise, a old, old, old rematch from the 1980s, 81 and 88. Obviously, completely different generation. 49ers, though, it'd be a similar, quite a similar team versus a similar Kansas City team. Obviously, certain players are gone, like Tyreek Hill and such. Good riddance <laughs> from the Chiefs. Um, and uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is not playing. Uh, maybe like your chances better with Brock Purdy going forward with that. But who would have thunk that even just like two months ago? But Purdy's been unbelievable. We'll see if his magic uh, carpet ride continues. Maybe it will lead him to a phenomenal Hall of Fame career and one of the great stories of all time. Or a spectacular one-year wonder where he wins it all but isn't as good after that. We'll have to wait and see. But he might be like a Kurt Warner type in a sense where... Not many people were high on Kurt Warner <laughs> for many years, and then he blew up and became a legend with the uh, the Rams and the Cardinals. So not so much with the Giants in between, <laughs> with that said. So um, I'm almost thinking Cincinnati could win the Super Bowl this year. But Cincinnati uh, and San Francisco, that's almost a pick at this stage. That's how good Cincinnati looks right now. But obviously both of these teams have to get there in order to pick either one to win. Uh, it might end up being Philly or Kansas, Kansas City, and I sure the heck hope not. Well, that, with, with that, we'll take a quick break and do a short fan interaction segment. Greetings, Joey. Happy off-season. Mm. Sadly, probably came a week earlier than I think most of us would have expected. Um, I always had an element of doubt that if they could beat the Giants again. And, and the Giants obviously came in with a game plan, and it worked. You know, they got their QB running, got him moving. We couldn't stop the run, and they made him look like um, Tom Brady at times, this defence of ours. Um, so, in some respects, yeah, a little disappointing. But, thankfully, they didn't edge out a win and then go off to uh, San Francisco and possibly had the sequel to 41 Donut, which I think is 
a distinct possibility. Um, if you look at that uh, that San Francisco team, it's uh, it's mightily impressive, and seems to have come out of nowhere almost, as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, Joey, can I just say uh, appreciate all the podcasts that you do over the season. I love the fact that you never sugarcoat what's going on. If it's good, you tell it the way it is. And if it's bad, hey, you tell it as it is, it's trash. So I appreciate that. And also, obviously, all the fan interaction, which is always nice. I'm not really a big podcaster these days. So you are pretty much my main ear to what is going on. And also, as I said to you, I like the fact that you also do great reviews of games and you um also when we're looking at the preview i love the history that you bring into it so cheers my man here's to a hopefully a brighter future for the team um because now is the opportunity for the K- the gm and obviously koc to start to build their team as opposed to the the sand roster that we've got that was put in place by spielman and uh zimmer and the two that had the conflict of, I don't want Cousins, but I want Cousins because I'm desperate to find a quarterback. And sadly, it didn't work because you can't play a competent quarterback, elite quarterback money, and hope you're going to find a way to have that Lombardi in the cabinet because it's never going to work. Let's be honest, elite quarterbacks have that something and they can work with average players. Whereas the likes of Cousins do need elite wide receivers, great running backs and a pretty damn good O-line to succeed. And that was never going to be the case with this team. We just didn't have the cap space to do it. Although our offence this year looked mightily impressive on paper. But what bugged the hell out of me this year was the times that this offence would just go to sleep for a quarter or maybe two quarters and do nothing and then find a way to get back into the game. I did not get that. I don't understand what the hell was going on at times when the team would go free and out multiple times. Um, I could go on and on, couldn't I? Uh, it wouldn't get me anywhere. The defence, though, was horrendous most of the season, as we knew it probably would be. Um, yes, they brought in a couple of <coughs> veterans, but you, yeah, fine, throw money at it, but it's not a solution to what they wanted to do. And it's been proved the case. Horrible defence. Anyway, my friend, I'm going to go um, and watch the divisional games um, when they come up. Um, Skull Brothers and Sisters, um, here's to 2023 stroke 24. Um, I think we might win 10 games next season. Um, but the Bears are coming by the looks of it. They've got uh, great potential that they can build on. And Detroit, hey, perhaps that line over there is going to finally start roaring. And uh, if Rogers leaves Green Bay, mm, they could be the basement team. Wouldn't that be fun? Skull Brothers and Sisters. And I thank you very much for that call. That was awesome. Uh, Mad Martin, and yeah, great thoughts. And the fr- <laughs> the frustration with, uh, yeah, all the team would just kind of, the offense would just kind of sputter and stop in like the second and third quarter. It made no sense. And maybe this Viking team should have probably had a closer record to the New York Giants, like 10 and 7, 11 and 6. And I, that's about what I picked them to be this year. And we'll have to wait and see with that, of course. And the number one thing that's probably plagued this team since, you know, the Tarkington days, since the Tarkington days, you know, obviously post Tarkington, maybe, maybe up to about, yeah, up to like the early 90s or so, uh, all the way up to today. But just kind of off and on is we're always trying to hit a home run in free agency or obviously the home run with the trade with somebody that's an older player and you're trying to put all your eggs in one basket. Like you go after Warren Moon, you go after Herschel Walker. Uh, the Brett Favre one almost worked. That was an, that was a cool one. That was a kind of a, a short spurt one. It didn't kill our cap or anything. But unfortunately, right after that, the Vikings were terrible for years. So uh, magically, everybody got old or didn't want to be here anymore or whatever the heck happened. Like Percy Harvin was like a maniac, basically. Um, guys got hurt. Guys got old. Guys moved on via free agency, blah, blah, blah. And that's kind of the NFL in a lot of ways. The reason why we call it not for long. But... 
you know, paying a guy $35 million a year who's not really a $35 million player in Kirk Cousins. He's, he's really talented. He has special skills. But there's always going to be something missing. He, you know, he's always going to kind of go with, a, you know, the, the infamous check down. There's always some magical time. Like, he'll, he'll maybe be great all year, and then it's, it's just he fits perfectly with what the Vikings have done over the years. Warren Moon had never won a playoff game. Uh, an illustrious career, an illustrious career, career, phenomenal career with Houston and obviously in the CFL and all that, but never won a playoff game. He just wasn't a winner. Uh, he'd throw the interceptions at the worst time you can imagine. Um, he'd have these great comebacks in the regular season, but here come the playoffs, and it was just like, you know, where's my pillow? You know, I, it, where's my pillow? The regular season's over. It's time for bed. That's pretty much what happened. Like, uh, how do you get your butts kicked that badly at home by a Chicago Bears team? It was ridiculous. Uh, Moon wasn't the Moon wasn't every everything wrong with that team, but he wasn't everything right either. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what's plagued this franchise. It's kind of going for the big, big free agent quarterback or somebody like that, where you're kind of again putting all your eggs in one basket, and it doesn't work. It just doesn't work out. Um, and you always say this team needs to get lucky, like 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 a Brock Purdy type of a player late in the draft, the Tom Brady type player in the draft. Aaron Rodgers slips to 24th uh, f- from from one or two, where it was going to be, you know, Alex Smith or Aaron Rodgers. Slips all the way to 24th. Uh, and wow, Green Bay got him. Um, <laughs> phenomenal career. At least they got one Super Bowl out of it, but several playoff runs as well. One Super Bowl is a heck of a lot better than zero. And the, in- the infamous lines you hear about here, look at this empty, look at this empty box. That's the Viking trophy case, you know. So, stuff like that. Unless you count the uh, NFL championship, obviously you don't. But we were the last team to win that trophy. Apparently, nobody knows where that trophy is, which is weird. So, the uh, 1969 NFL championship trophy. Um, and it's like the curse of that, I guess. The curse of that trophy, apparently, like is supposedly what people believe. <laughs> kind of funny, but interesting at the same time. Um <laughs> But in a lot of ways, yeah. I mean, you really got me going with that because it's, it's true. I mean, that's kind of one of the things and putting all your eggs in one basket. And that's kind of been the number one theme for the Minnesota Vikings for many years, pretty much post-Tarkington especially. But yeah, um, maybe not immediately after that. It was kind of a mediocre to decent team in the early 80s and beyond and so forth. But got a couple of miracles here and there. But it's the typical one and done or maybe you get to the second round and done type of thing. Um so, it's been a massive frustration forever. Thank you very much. That was an awesome call. Now we'll hear from uh, Mad Martin again out of Northern, Scot- Northern Scotland on Twitter. At Purple Mafia Show, at Purple Mafia Show, a retweet from Malcolm out of California. Episode 393, all too familiar, yep. Sam Gupta coming in out of Cali again. Both of these guys, Purple Mafia Hall of Famers, obviously Mad Martin is. <laughs> no kidding, right? Sam Gupta says... Thanks for another season of Vikings Podcasts. I know it's a lot of work, and I appreciate the, all of the energy you put into this. And Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sam. He says, uh, Bummer, the season is over. We're going to have a lot of changes coming soon. It will be interesting to watch everything unfold. And I'm sorry about the background noise. It's, <laughs> background noise is driving me nuts. <laughs> so, just so you know. We, we, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Only you know, right? <laughs> yeah. But no, that was, a, yeah, that, that was a great tweet. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, Sam continues. Another one says, that is so true. What was I ranting about? I think it's the name of the episode. Oh, oh yeah, Tom Hayen. <laughs> yeah, I was saying embarrassing. This Giants team, yeah, this is what I said last week. Embarrassing. This Giants team is not going anywhere after today. Boy, does that end up being true. Everybody and their mother knows it. Absolutely embarrassing. Those are my final thoughts for today. Tom Hayen said, no worries. We would have surrendered 500 plus yards and 40 points next week at San Francisco. And I understand and Sam Gupta responds with, that is so true. The way the defense is playing, I would have had a career day. I would have had a career day as a Giants receiver. I think so, too. Sam Gupta with his second touchdown and 160 yards. Not to mention, if you're a running back, you probably would have averaged seven yards a carry, and you would have had Tecmo football music playing nonstop because you just, you know, you'd have been like Bo Jackson, maybe. <laughs> the Bo Jackson glitch might actually be real in the NFL. I guess the uh, Ed Donashell defense, which no longer exists now, I hope. It better not. <laughs> Obviously, he's gone, but the next guy better be an, an, an upgrade. And, of course, we've got to upgrade the players. And, of course, uh, cheaper players. Cheaper, young young players on the rookie scale. That's a good thing. 
long as they actually know how to play. We, we hope, you know, because sometimes rookies are, are rookies, you know. Um, Vince Germano out of Australia also retweeted. Tanae Brown out of New Zealand also retweeted. Thank you guys very much. Pigskin Podcast did the same. Thank you guys. Coming in out of Vancouver, British Columbia. Dylan and Kyle there. Mad Martin out of Northern Scotland says, Indeed, all too familiar is a fitting title for the episode. Yes, <laughs> yep, amen to that. Mad Martin will wrap up the section with a couple tweets. And, and I'm glad that he was able to jump in on the weekend conversation because I stupidly did not create a thread for a division round weekend. It wasn't the best, but I feel like a jerk for not doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to remember to put it in uh, maybe even right after the show for Championship Sunday because it needs to be up there. <laughs> Mad Martin says, and yes, Ma- uh, yeah, Dave, continue to tweet. Really appreciate it. He says, well, after the weekend games, cannot see beyond the Bengals-Eagles in the big game. Hmm, Bengals and Eagles, huh? Yeah, that could be, that could be. Hope I'm wrong on one of those, that would be the Eagles, right? Love to see the Eagles taken out in their house next Sunday. I hope so, too. Um, But that might be, that might be, and boy, will we have a rooting interest in that Super Bowl if that's the case, because Bengals, 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 Bengals. The only matchup, obviously, I'd have a tough time would be, say, if it's Bengals and 49ers in the Super Bowl. I'd have a tough time. I'd lean Cincinnati in terms of that's who I'd rather see because, well, they've lost th- they've lost three Super Bowls already. I don't want them to lose again. <laughs> and it would suck to lose to the same team for a third time, even though it's a totally different uh, generation. So it would still suck. Um, Ned Martin says, The Bills' performance was surprisingly bad. The Bengals owned them on both sides of the ball. Did not see that coming. The Bills are truly our AFC mirror team. Yes, they are. Where it's a great season, looks incredibly promising, no matter what year it is, if it's 98, 2009, 1987, whatever. And then you just don't get it done. Um, 87 was more of a miracle run, and that ended with a heartbreaking loss. So that was kind of a rare one where the Vikings actually won multiple road games. That's probably why a lot of people thought, wow, that's just like they're going to be like the 87 Twins and win it all. But 87 Twins did have home field advantage in the World Series and in the uh, American League Championship Series too, so... Twins were in a, the Twins were at a uh, bigger advantage than the Vikings, but we were hoping that the Vikings would somehow uh, take the baton from the Twins and also win the championship in the same year. 1987 could have been the most magical year of all time in Minnesota, but it still pretty much is anyway, the fact that uh, we did win our first world championship in this town, unless you count the Minneapolis Lakers in the 50s, which I suppose you can. Back to the, fa- or over to the Facebook page now. Facebook.com forward slash Pearl Mafia Show. Get on there and comment, and really appreciate those of you that have for, for so many years, and even some for just a few months. Um, interesting that that was me instead of the Purple Mafia Show. Mark Carlson out of Iowa says, Got the download, listening now. Thank you, Joey. And yep, you're always welcome, and thank you. I was saying, and you always and forever, that was a tough, that was a tough one. Yep, sure was. Cedric Paulding jumping in, which is great to hear from, uh, out of Mississippi. So uh, CBS Sports says, uh, Vikings are named a wild card landing spot for Lamar Jackson in the 2023 NFL offseason. So, so maybe some kind of trade, of course. Cedric Paulding says, our running game with him, Cooks, and Madison would be awesome. I feel our passing offense would take a step back, and I'm not sure how he fits in the O'Connell scheme. So that could be an interesting one. Um, I think O'Connell... No, no, what am I talking about? It would be interesting. Yeah, it'd be a complete change. Obviously, he's a completely different quarterback than Kirk Cousins. He's not the classic, uh, you know, stand-up quarterback, the old, old-style quarterback. Uh, obviously, much more of a mobile guy, but it'd be a fascinating uh, change. And, uh, you know, I, I doubt it. It's probably like, uh, again, like you're thinking, it's probably un- unlikely. Um, Tanae Brown uh, mentioned Jackson Latham, and looks like he got an angry response. He's just like, no, maybe... <laughs> Maybe uh, Jackson might be with the uh, Baltimore Ravens there out of New Zealand, I'm guessing. Obviously, Tanae is. And there it is, finally, pro football talk. Vikings fire defensive coordinator Ed Donatel. So it finally did happen. <laughs> um, it, 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 it's, it's not like necessarily loving the fact somebody gets fired, but it, it kind of had to happen, right? Josh Mayer Henry out of Colorado says, surprised it took this long. Yeah, it was weird. Josh Paul Zotla Jr., or senior, part of me, says, awesome. Brett McCarthy, South Dakota, says it's about time. Yep. True and true and true. Continue here. 
What was this? Okay, yep, it was a tweet from Jace Fredericks, shared by Score North and then shared by Purple Mafia. Um, points allowed in 2021 under Mike Zimmer, 426. Points allowed in 2022 under Ed Donatel, 427. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Lizzie Borden took an axe. He gave her father 40 wax. When, he, when she saw what she had done, she gave her mother 41. That's pretty much what happened here in a way. Well, yeah. Vikings opponents took an axe. They gave us 426 wax. When they saw what they'd done, they gave Ed Donatel's <laughs> defense 427. Okay, it didn't rhyme, but... Uh, yeah, anyhow. Didn't rhyme at all, did it? That was terrible. They gave them um, another one more. <laughs> Dan Hodgman says, both shit defenses, that's why they're no longer here. Correct? Yep. <laughs> Correct. Um, three three time Vikings Pro Bowler deletes all team photos from social media. That's the second last thing. And that was uh, Zadarius Smith. So Zadarius Smith has deleted all of his social media um, team photos, like Viking stuff, Viking related. Well, you know, so chances are he's going to be let go. We're talking a ton of cap space in that case because uh, what is his dead cap hit? Like $3 million. And he's making like 15 or so. That's a huge difference. So, yeah, huge difference. Huge cap savings there if the Vikings go in that direction. Um, I was saying go San Francisco and Cincinnati next week. And Mark Carlson says, I sure didn't expect Cincinnati to get past Buffalo. Yep, I, I had a feeling they would. I was kind of picking it. There's Cincinnati, there's just something different about that team. And there's a pretty good chance they actually win it all. Uh, and they will at some point. If they don't, put it this way, if Cincinnati doesn't end their drought during the Joe Burrow era, ooh, that would be insanely disappointing for Cincinnati fans, of course, but also NFL fans. Like, really? Like, how, how could this happen? So, with that said, that'll wrap up the fan interaction segment and wrap up the show. Uh, really thank all of you guys for interacting with us. It is interacting with me, anyway, and the other listeners. That's greatly appreciated. Gold Star has to go to <laughs> Mad Martin with a bullet. An amazing, amazing show. Sam Gupta gets a gold-plated silver. Mark Carlson gets a silver-plated bronze. Really appreciate you guys for everything you had to say. And I love you so much. Please write a positive rating for Pro Mafia on any of these uh, apps that allow you to do so. Apple Podcasts, obviously you can. Audible, can Stitcher, and Spotify, I believe, is just star ratings. But if you do that, it's very appreciated. Helps the show. Call in. Don't be afraid. Just uh, pick up your smart device, and there's a free voice recording app on every device there is. Just open it, press record, treat it like a phone call. When you stop it, share it, and send it to share it or send it to Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. That will be in the uh, contact details in the show notes for that, the, uh, for a con- copy and paste or whatever you want to do with that. Um, Again, just thank you very much. Tell your friends about the show if you could, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Go Bengals. Go 49ers.